Well, hello there. How are you today? I hope you are doing fine. And thank you so much for joining us again for our daily Bible reading time. You have made it extra special for joining us today or tonight, whichever it happens to be for you. This is day 231 of our chronological journey through the Bible in a year. And we're going to finish up two books this time. Uh, we're going to finish up 2 Kings, the last two chapters, 24 and 25. And then we're going to jump over and catch the end of 2 Chronicles, chapter 36. So isn't that exciting? It's kind of neat to finish all the way through these books. All right, well, if you're ready to go, let's get settled in here nice and comfortable. And we'll start here again in 2 Kings 24. Jehoiakim's Rebellion and Death During Jehoiakim's reign, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babel attacked. Jehoiakim became his vassal for three years, and then he turned and rebelled against him. The Lord sent Kazdin, Aramean, Moabite, and Ammonite raiders against Jehoiakim. He sent them against Judah to destroy it. According to the word of the Lord, he had spoken through his servants, the prophets. Indeed, this happened to Judah at the Lord's command to remove them from his presence. It was because of the sins of Menasheh, according to all he had done, and also because of all the innocent blood he had shed. He had filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, and the Lord was not willing to forgive. The rest of the events of Jehoiakim's reign, along with all his accomplishments, are written in the historical record of Judah's kings. Jehoiakim rested with his ancestors, and his son Jehoiakim became king in his place. Now the king of Egypt did not march out of his land again, for the king of Babel took everything that had belonged to the king of Egypt, from the brook of Egypt to the Euphrates River. Judah's king Jehoiachin. Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he became king, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Nehushta, daughter of El Natan. She was from Jerusalem. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight, just as his father had done. Deportations to Babel. At that time, the servants of King Nebuchadnezzar of Vavel marched, marched up to Jerusalem, and the city came under siege. King Nebuchadnezzar of Vavel came to the city while his servants were besieging it. King Jehoiachin of Judah, along with his mother, his servants, his commanders, and his officials, surrendered to the king of Vavel. So the king of Babel took him captive in the eighth year of his reign. He also carried off from there all the treasures of the Lord's temple and the treasures of the king's palace. And he cut into pieces all the gold articles that King Shlomo of Israel had made for the Lord's sanctuary, just as the Lord had predicted. He deported all Jerusalem and all the commanders and all the best soldiers, 10,000 captives, including all the craftsmen and metalsmiths. Except for the poorest people of the land, no one remained. Nebuchadnezzar deported Jehoiachin to Babel, to Babel. He took the king's mother, the king's wives, his officials, and the leading men of the land into exile from Jerusalem to Babel. The king of Babel brought captive into Babel all 7,000 of the best soldiers and 1,000 craftsmen and metalsmiths, all strong and fit for war. And the king of Babel made Mataniah, Jehoiachin's uncle, king in his place, and changed his name to Sedekiah. Judah's king Sedekiah. Sedekiah was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hamutal, daughter of Yermiah. She was from Libna. Sedekiah did what was evil in the Lord's sight, just as Jehoiakim had done. 
Because of the Lord's anger, it came to the point in Jerusalem and Judah that he finally banished them from his presence. Then Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babel. Nebuchadnezzar's siege of Jerusalem, chapter 25. In the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign, on the tenth day of the tenth month, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babel advanced against Jerusalem with his entire army. They laid siege to the city and built a siege wall against it all around. The city was under siege until King Zedekiah's eleventh year. By the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine was so severe in the city that the common people had no food. Then the city was broken into, and all the warriors fled at night by way of the city gate between the two walls near the king's garden, even though the Kastim surrounded the city. As the king made his way along the route to Arabah, the Kastim army pursued him and overtook him in the plains of Jericho. Zedekiah's entire army left him and scattered. The Kastim seized the king and brought him up to the king of Babel at Ribla, and they passed sentence on him. They slaughtered Zedekiah's sons before his eyes. Finally, the king of Babel blinded Zedekiah, bound him in bronze chains, and took him to Babel. Jerusalem destroyed. On the seventh day of the fifth month, which was the nineteenth year of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babel, Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guards, a servant of the king of Babel, entered Jerusalem. He burned the Lord's temple, the king's palace, and all the houses of Jerusalem. He burned down all the great houses. The whole Kazdim army with the captain of the guards tore down the walls surrounding Jerusalem. Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guards, deported the rest of the people who remained in the city, the deserters who had defected to the king of Babel, and the rest of the population. But the captain of the guards left some of the poorest of the land to be vine dressers and farmers. Now, the Kastim broke into pieces the bronze pillars of the Lord's temple, the water carts, and the bronze basin, which were in the Lord's temple, and carried the bronze to Babel. They also took the pots, shovels, wick trimmers, dishes, and all the bronze articles used in the priest's service. The captain of the guards took away the fire pans and sprinkling basins, whatever was gold or silver. As for the two pillars, the one basin, and the water carts that Shlomo had made for the Lord's temple, the weight of the bronze of all these articles was beyond measure. One pillar was twenty-seven feet tall, and had a bronze capital on top of it. The capital, encircled by a grating and pomegranates of bronze, stood five feet high. The second pillar was the same, with its own grating. The captain of the guards also took away Siraya, the chief priest, Sifania, the priest of the second rank, and the three doorkeepers. From the city he took a court official who had been appointed over the warriors, five trusted royal aides found in the city, the secretary of the commander of the army, who enlisted the people of the land for military duty, and sixty men from the common people who were found within the city. Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guards, took them and brought them to the king of Babel at Ribla. The king of Babel put them to death at Ribla in the land of Hamat. So Judah went into exile from its land. Gedaliah made governor. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babel appointed Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, son of Shaphan, over the rest of the people he left in the land of Judah. When all the commanders of the armies, they and their men, 
heard that the king of Avel had appointed Gedaliah, they came to Gedaliah at Mitzpah. The commanders included Ishmael, son of Netaniah, Yohanan, son of Karayach, Seriah, excuse me, Seriah, son of Tanhumet, and the Netophatite, and Yasaniah, son of Mahakatha, son of the Mahakathite, they and their men. Gedaliah swore an oath to them and their men, assuring them, Don't be afraid of the servants of the Kastim. Live in the land and serve the king of Babel, and it will go well with for you. In the seventh month, however, Ishmael, son of Netaniah, son of Elishima, of the royal family, came with ten men and struck down Gedaliah, and he died. Also, they killed the Judeans and the Kasdim who were with him at Mitzpah. Then all the people, from the youngest to the oldest, and the commanders of the army, left and went to Egypt, for they were afraid of the Kasdim. Jehoiakim pardoned. On the twenty-seventh day of the twelfth month of the thirty-seventh year of the exile of Judah's king Jehoiakim, in the year Evil Merodach became king of Vavel. He pardoned King Jehoiachin of Judah and released him from prison. He spoke kindly to him and set his throne over the thrones of the kings who were with him in Babel. So Jehoiachin changed his prison clothes and he dined regularly in the presence of the king of Babel for the rest of his life. As for his allowance, a regular allowance was given to him by the king, a portion for each day for the rest of his life. And now let's jump over and catch the end of Second Chronicles, chapter 36. Yudah's king, Yehoahaz. Chapter 36. Then the common people took Yehoahaz, son of Yoshia, and made him king in Jerusalem in place of his father. Jehoahaz was twenty-three years old when he became king, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. The king of Egypt deposed him in Jerusalem and fined the land seventy-five hundred pounds of silver and seventy-five pounds of gold. Judah's king Jehoiakim. Then King Neko of Egypt made Jehoahaz's brother Eliakim king over Judah and Jerusalem, and changed Eliakim's name to Jehoiakim. But Neko took his brother Jehoahaz and brought him to Egypt. Jehoiakim was twenty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. Now King Nebuchadnezzar of Vavel attacked him and bound him in bronze shackles to take him to Vavel. Also Nebuchadnezzar took some of the articles of the Lord's temple to Vavel and put them in his temple in Vavel. The rest of the deeds of Jehoiakim, the detestable actions he committed, and what was found against him are written in the book of Israel's kings. His son Jehoiachin became king in his place. Judah's king Jehoiachin. Jehoiachin was eighteen years old when he became king, and he reigned three months and ten days in Jerusalem. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight. In the spring, Nebuchadnezzar sent for him and brought him to Vavel along with the valuable articles of the Lord's temple. Then he made Jehoiakim's brother Zedekiah king over Judah and Jerusalem. Judah's king Zedekiah. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord his God and did not humble himself before the prophet Yermiah at the Lord's command. He also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who had made him swear allegiance by God. 
he became obstinate and hardened his heart against returning to the Lord, the God of Israel. All the leaders of the priests and the people multiplied their unfaithful deeds, imitating all the detestable practices of the nations, and they defiled the Lord's temple that he had consecrated in Jerusalem. The destruction of Jerusalem. But the Lord, the God of their ancestors, sent word against them by the hand of his messengers, sending them time and time again, for he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they kept ridiculing God's messengers, despising his words and scoffing at his prophets, until the Lord's wrath was so stirred up against his people that there was no remedy. So he brought up against them the king of the Kazdim, who killed their fit young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary. He had no pity on young men or young women, elderly or aged. He handed them all over to him. He took everything to Vavel, all the articles of God's temple, large and small, the treasures of the Lord's temple, and the treasures of the king and his officials. Then the Kastim burned God's temple. They tore down Jerusalem's wall, burned all its palaces, and destroyed all its valuable articles. He deported those who escaped from the sword to Vavel, and they became servants to him and his sons until the rise of the Persian kingdom. This fulfilled the word of the Lord through Yermia and the land enjoyed its shavat rest and the land enjoyed its shavat rest all the days of the desolation until 70 years were fulfilled the decree of koresh in the first year of king koresh of persia paras in order to fulfill the word of the lord spoken through jeremia the lord roused the spirit of king koresh of to issue a proclamation throughout his entire kingdom and also to put it in writing. This is what King Koresh of Paras says. The Lord, the God of the heavens, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth and has appointed me to build him a temple at Jerusalem in Judah. Any of his people among you may go up and may the Lord his God be with him. And may the Lord bless the reading and study of his word.